I'm here with Peter from Radial, and he's going to show us the new workhorse and their, their rack. How's that? Nice. Spinny, spinny. Very nice. All right, so what we've got here is we've got eight slots. We've got, down here, we've actually got slide-in um, tray. So that the slots actually go in where they're supposed to go in. You don't have to mess around with um, it. The idea is simple. Most people today work inside the box. What we want to do is we want to find a way to make it easy for them to interface with their computers and, and have a lot of fun toys to play with. And that's exactly what this is a big toy box. You've got an eight channel mixing console built in. So your pan, level control, main monitor and headphone. And there's two headphones here so that when you've got your talent for a live gig, you can actually have your buddy listen in and say, okay, here you go, is that all right? Good, now go play. So that's what two headphones are there for. On the back side, what you've got is you've got your standard input and output, but in addition, we've also got parallel quarter inch jacks because so many products are quarter inch, and we have D subs to parallel. So you've got eight ins, eight outs, all on D sub. Um, at the far end here, you've got your main out, and your main out has uh, main. Both TRS and XLR, transformer isolated by the way, um, your monitor, and then we use the uh, Rupert Neve bus, because as you guys probably know, we, we ended up hiring the two Rupert Neve engineers that did all the portico stuff, so they, they come over to our team and um, they're the guys that developed this program or this product for us. So they're now full-time employees of radial engineering. Um, so this is the first project I got them on, which has been really a cool project. A couple other things that we've done is we've added a function here we call feed. The idea is that I can put a mic pre, an EQ, a compressor, a gate, and I can just feed them one into the other without any patch of them. So I can create my own strip to any size that I want. I can do a stereo strip or whatever I want to do. And then I can either pull them to level up from the main or from any one of these outputs or D sub. For people that work out of the box, um, we've also created a summing mixer. Because since we've already got a full Rupert Neve design mixer inside, basically, right? We're following Neve's. I mean, Neve wrote the book on mixing consoles. Why reinvent it? That's basically a Neve console in here, a mini one. You run right in here with a D sub. That also allows us to do backwards compatibility with all the old API modules. So now I can take an API module, plug it in here, basically take the XLR out, run it in here, and now I've got all the old modules sunk. So we've covered every angle of this thing. Finally, we've got one other function here called Omniport. And this we found out after developing all of our modules. We've got like a whole bunch of different modules. Each module needs a different access port of sorts. For example, with a compressor or a gate, we might want a key input. The mic pre, it could be a guitar instrument input. So Omniport becomes, follows the personality of the product. And we're doing an open architecture, open, what we call open design uh, concept, where we're giving free specs to all the manufacturers so they can adopt this if they so desire. But it's fully API compatible. Tell me about the uh, voltage on the uh, supply grid. Uh, the, uh, the other thing we've done is we used an external digital power supply to yeah. feed the box because we didn't want to have pollution inside the box. And also space is a consideration. So as you bring things closer together, you get more noise. So by putting in an external supply, we solve the problem. But it also gives us some other advantages. We can spec out our own power supply, and instead of 5 milliamps phantom power, we've got 15. Instead of 110 milliamps of the module, we've got 150. So by having more current available, it just makes everything run better. And it's all auto-tracking, so if one device goes down, the other are completely separate. So, it's a well-designed product, and um, it's going to retail for $1,200, $1,299, street at $999, and uh, we anticipate the other delivering these at the end of December. Great. It's Rev2. Thanks very much, Peter.